When we play rhythm guitar, we have, of course, our open chords. And, of course, we have our bar chords. But there are other chord shapes that we can use that will help us move up and down the fretboard. And they're not that hard to find if you have the right tools to use them. So let's change how you play rhythm guitar. Some weeks ago, I made a video called The Most Useful Chords I Ever Learned, and a lot of you commented asking me to do a similar video, but with minor chords. So here it is. We're gonna do this in the key of A minor. So of course we have easy A minor chord, right? We're gonna then take the next step up the fretboard and we're gonna play what I like to call the stairway shape. I call it the stairway shape because it's the first chord in the famous song. I mean, you might know it. And it just looks like this. So sometimes having a little name for a certain chord shape helps us to, one, communicate about it so I can quickly say to my students, hey, play the stairway shape, right? And also somehow having that little kind of tag in our mind helps us to remember which shape it actually is. So we know that's the stairway shape, but we know it's also that shape for A minor because this stairway shape is related to this big A minor bar chord. In fact, we can see that it's really just the top of that A minor bar chord, right? It's the top four strings. So even right off the bat, if we don't always want to be playing a big bar chord, we can shrink it down to just the top four strings. or we can mix and match from open. Nice, right? And the key of A minor is especially good because with a lot of these chords, I can keep that open A string ringing, right? Okay, so now we have two A minors. Let's do the next A minor. The next A minor, I call it the triangle shape because it does have a triangle. This one's not as easy to grab, but it's such a good sounding chord. So we have A minor. Stare. Triangle. Now we have lots of ways of playing A minor. Now, Let's add a little trick to it, especially when we get to stairway A minor, because stairway A minor, which we said is related to this big A minor bar chord, and this big A minor bar chord is related to the easy A minor pentatonic shape. So when we get there, we can play a little lick. doesn't have to be much. In fact, if we are playing rhythm guitar, we're accompanying possibly someone singing or someone playing some kind of lead line. We don't generally want to be too busy, depending on the genre, but generally we don't want to be too busy. So you can just play a little tiny lick. And the fact that we're already combining chords and a little bit of soloing makes it so interesting already that it doesn't need to be like a big hot lick, right? A minor, open. Stairway, little lick. Triangle, maybe back to stairway. Now, that was a lot of A minor. So if we have a song that has, say, four measures of A minor, which is a lot, but it certainly happens in songs, we can keep it interesting because if we're just sitting there like A minor for four bars, it gets a little boring. Again, it depends on the song. It depends on the genre. For certain songs, that is the right thing to do. For certain songs, we should just stay here, right? Or we should just stay here. But I know myself, when I'm playing in bands, 
I get bored. I get bored of just sitting here. It's like I gotta do something. I gotta move. I gotta move. So now let's change chords. Let's say the song goes from the one chord to the four chord. So in this case, that's A minor to D minor. And we can start with our D minor open chord. Why not? It's still a good chord. We're still gonna use it, right? And we're gonna move up to the next chord shape for D minor. It would be, if we were using the bar chord shape, it would be this shape. Sure, that's a good shape, we like that. But again, we're going for more variety here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to shrink it down and we're just gonna use the top three strings in this case, cause it's easy. I've got these notes here. And just by fluke, just because of the magic of this particular key in A minor, or this particular chord, D minor, I have an open D string, so I can include that. Now we can't always include that, of course, in other keys, but here it works great, so let's use it. There's a really cool, simple D minor. So now I have D minor open. And I call this one diagonal line. Again, it sounds silly, but having just a, a little name for them really helps students to remember them, I know, and, and communicate so that when I'm here teaching students these things, I'll say things, okay, you're gonna do open D minor, diagonal line, and then you're gonna do stairway D minor, which is coming next. But diagonal line, let's figure out how do we quickly find D minor in this shape? They're thinking of the D minor bar chord. And even though they're not necessarily playing the whole D minor bar chord, they don't have to. They can imagine this note here, that D, the fifth fret of the A string, as a landmark. So we call them a landmark. And we can picture that landmark there, or we can picture the whole D minor bar chord. And we just don't play the whole thing. We just play the piece of it, because sometimes playing the smaller version is more interesting. So we have D minor and open. And diagonal line D minor. Let's do the next D minor, and it's a familiar shape. It's stairway D minor. Now, again, how do we find stairway, the shape stairway for whatever chord we need? Remember, it's just the smaller version of the big bar chord. Right, so that's my big D minor bar chord, and stairway is just the top four strings of it. So let's do all our D minors. We have open D minor. We have diagonal line D minor. And we have stairway D minor. And remember that whenever we're in stairway shape, we have our easy minor pentatonic shape that we could use to create little licks that connect to the chord shape. So let's say we're open, diagonal line, stereo. Diagonal, open. Let's combine our A minor shapes with our D minor shapes now. We'll do a bunch of e A minor, I don't know, maybe what, four bars, and a bunch of D minor. So I have open A minor. Stairway, a little lick. And that's triangle A minor. Right now, I'm gonna do D minor open. Diagonal line. And then stairway D minor, a little lick. And maybe back again, right? Let's see if I can combine those in time. So I have A minor. Stairway. Triangle. D minor. That was pretty nice. Now, so far, we're just thinking of moving upwards with each chord. 
but we also want to be able to think moving this way when we change chords, right? So let's say we're on stairway A minor as an example. I have stairway A minor with a little lick maybe. Remember that my four chord D minor, diagonal line D minor is right there. So again, stairway A minor. Because we're in the key of A minor, I can still keep playing A minor pentatonic. Right? Or let's say I was up here at triangle A minor, and I want to try to think what is my closest D minor? My closest D minor is probably stairway D minor. And we can get good at that over time. Uh, the the steps in my mind are basically, I think, I think to myself, okay, what is the next chord I need? I'm on A minor, what is the next chord I need? I need a D minor. And so I just say to myself, okay, where is the closest uh, landmark for a D that I need? And we have a D there. So in my mind, I could imagine going to the big D minor bar chord, which would be cool. And if that's the first thing that comes to our mind, go with it because we've got to get there on the beat, right? But with more practice, you'll be able to see the other options. When you see this D root here, you will now know that you have the option of playing the whole bar chord or the stairway shape at the top. So we have A minor, D minor. So now we're gonna add our five chord to the mix in the key of A minor, a minor is one, D minor is four, E minor is five. And so, if we're just gonna go in this direction, after our open E minor chord, we have triangle E minor. Because there's only so many of these shapes, there's really only three of them, right? So they're just gonna start repeating, but we have to get good at finding them when we need them, right? Now, I will admit this one is harder to find, this triangle shape. Uh, I think some of my students, they will use this E way up here. That's a long ways away, but whatever. Maybe it doesn't matter, right? That is an E note. And so if you memorize that way up there is an E, so therefore, therefore down here is the triangle E minor. If it works, it works, right? You just need a landmark to find it. So. Again, we have E minor, and then we have E minor, and then we have, what's our next one? Diagonal E minor. And what's my landmark for diagonal E minor? He is this basic E minor bar chord, because there's that landmark again. So we've got three E minors now. We have open, triangle, and diagonal line. And of course, we also have one more. We have Stairway E minor. It's getting kind of high up as a chord, but in the right song at the right moment, it'll be really cool. Let's put some of that together. I'm gonna play almost randomly. I'm going to think about the next chord, and then I'm gonna think about where I wanna play that next chord. And if I have a comfortable, easy pentatonic shape around it, I'll just play a little lick. So if you haven't seen that video called The Most Useful Chords I Ever Learned, I'm gonna put a link to that here for you. That's a similar concept, but using major chords. Thanks a lot for watching. My name is Blue Morris. I teach guitar here in Vancouver, and I'm gonna make a lesson for you on YouTube every Saturday. See you then.